Right now, you're listening to the Azeem Digital Asks podcast, the podcast where I, Azeem, talk to some of the top marketers in the industry, find out everything about them, how they got to where they are today, and more importantly, sharing some really useful marketing tips that will help everybody listening to this become better marketers. Stay tuned for another great episode. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Azeem Digital Asks podcast. I am super, super, mega, ultra, hugely excited to bring you my guest today. I'm very glad she's on the show. She is the awesome Diana Richardson, who is the social media and community manager at SEM Rush or SEMrush, depending on how you pronounce it. She loves wine. She's a public speaker. She loves wine. She's a thyroid cancer survivor. She loves wine and she is into SEO, SEM digital marketing and she loves wine. Diana, welcome to the show. <laughs> wow, I think you could absolutely make a career out of just introductions. I mean, <laughs> maybe you should be like the, you know, the announcer on the Academy Awards where they're as the actor is making their way to the stage, like these amazing bios and and backgrounds, you you've got a talent for that, Mister. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I do think I forgot to mention that you love wine, so I'll just drop oh, that yep, in. totally yeah. skip over that. And if there's anything anyone takes away from this podcast today, that's the most important thing. Awesome. We can just end it there. <laughs> <laughs> I've shared my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, Super glad, as I mentioned, that you've agreed to join. Um, I will absolutely acknowledge for the listeners, though, that there is horrendous echo in my voice. Uh, it's because I've changed my recording location today. So I'm going to use that as an excuse to talk less. On that note, before we learn a little bit more about you, Diana, um, mm-hmm. we're going to make the icebreaker presidential themed, mm-hmm. given that... Yeah, we had, a, we had a big couple of days here in the US. <laughs> Yeah, so we won't delve into it too much, but my icebreaker for you is you've got absolute free reign. You can add anyone to Mount Rushmore. Who would it be and why? So that's such an interesting question too. Um, Although I probably would have preferred the zombie apocalypse question. (laughs) (laughs) This is a great one actually, because, um, you know, as Americans, we take a lot of pride in our monuments um, and representing our history. So I actually Googled Mount Rushmore because I wanted to learn about the why it was created and the purpose of the folks that are already on the mountain. And it was really interesting what Wikipedia said. They said the four presidents were chosen to represent the nation's birth, growth, development, and preservation, which is amazing and so American. And I, I love, I love that. So to uphold those core values of who is represented on that mountain, I'd like to see Barack Obama. I mean, regardless of your political affiliation, his presence in our history of presidents is absolutely worth monumenting. Love that answer. Love that answer. Yeah. So, um, as a side note, I was randomly watching, uh, old YouTube videos of Obama. Um, and I think uh, I'd watched his uh, like farewell speech, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh. I remember watching his inauguration speech, and I was like, God, this is really moving, powerful stuff. Yeah, he he's an incredible speaker. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm going to put a absolute hard stop on anything presidential there because uh, <laughs> we don't want to get too political. But yeah, mm-hmm. great answer. Love that. So. Yeah. Given um, that I didn't do a really good job of your introduction. <laughs> you did an amazing job. <laughs> you already discovered a new career path for you. <laughs> <laughs> did I mention that you love wine? By the yeah, way? <laughs> so we're not going to come up again. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to stop because I'll make you sound like an alcoholic. I'm sorry. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to tell the listeners a little bit more about yourself? Sure, sure. And it's really awesome to be here, Azim's audience. Thank you guys for tuning in. So yeah, I'm Diana and I am very long winded. So bear with me, guys. (laughs) And I also use a lot of hand gestures, which you're totally missing out on right now. Um, (laughs) I'm a wine hobbyist and I'm a digital marketer. So my career as an SEO and in PPC and in content creation started way back in 2006, which is bonkers. So it's been a really long ride. I started working for a very large corporation that was actually transitioning from print to digital at the time I was hired. And so SEO and PPC were still really, really new, especially as like a resale service. 
So I was with that company and well, that's how I learned all of this was from the ground up, literally kind of from the beginning of, of all of it. But that's where I was for over 12 years. And eventually I wanted to become more than just the Google girl. So I branched out and I landed this amazing job with this insanely creative boutique marketing and branding agency as their digital marketing director. And that finally allowed me to have the freedom to tackle social media and email marketing, which were two of the areas I really wanted to get my hands on and physically do. But I also was learning the beautiful process of brand development and event management, graphic and video design, and just things I was not exposed to in a large corporation. This agency was super small team and it was outstanding. So I really was able to learn about the power of branding there. And I'm just, I'm so grateful for that work family. But all of that led me to SEM Rush or SEM Rush because both are correct, as you mentioned. And <laughs> because I used that tool for so many years with my last two companies. So like I was the one that pushed to use that tool in, in my previous jobs and now I work for them. So it's incredible. And I would not have been in a place to do this job or the courage to even interview for this job if I didn't have my past experiences. So I'm just, I'm such a fangirl that in my SEM Rush interviews, it was so funny. I was so starstruck that to even be speaking with SEM Rush people, like I mentioned it throughout my whole interview. <laughs> so <laughs> I, just, I still can't believe that I work here. It's great. Awesome. I have got visions of like your house being completely full of summer swag and goodies. <laughs> they are the most comfortable socks. Like if you can have a summer sock, they are the most comfortable socks. <laughs> I did get a pair from Brighton SEO many years ago. Great. Um, but I accidentally put them in with uh, the wrong colored washing. So now they've gone sort of like a bluey gray color. <laughs> <laughs> that's not our brand colors. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's my bad. Sorry. Anyway, okay. again. Let me see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so look, that's a really, really interesting way to get yourself into the industry and get yourself to where you are now. If you could, say, jump into a time machine, go back to when you very first started in the industry, armed with all of the knowledge that you've got now, what advice do you think that you'd give to yourself on day one? So there are several things because I rarely have like one single answer to any question, <laughs> <laughs> but I would never stop learning, especially code for the SEO side part of my life. Um, I would really be, love to be able to dive into Python and things like that. Um, I also wish I had followed my instincts and dove deeper into social media marketing earlier in my career. Um, you know, I've been a practitioner of social media now for about three years but that's out of my 14 year career and I still feel like I'm catching up. <laughs> awesome. I can't, still can't believe that it's been 14 years. Like, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> that I've been doing anything <laughs> for that long amount of time. <laughs> and still, you still sound so passionate about it, which is awesome. Never lose that. Well, and it's so true. And I think that's how people find careers and they do evolve. And I think that is such an important part of our story and our history. And I mean, I'm sure you weren't born a podcaster. You've come into that life. I would love to know more about your history and into becoming a podcaster, but we don't start there. And you end up there because your past takes you to that place. And a lot of our past, you know, we have really tough jobs and jobs that we hate, but it all brings us to this kind of moment. And we learned things, you know, before I even did digital marketing, I investigated damage to rental cars, but that's where I realized how much I loved research and putting pieces of puzzles together. And I would never have known that. And that's such a big factor in digital marketing and SEO and tracking ROI and, you know, metrics and KPIs. I would never have had that discovery if I hadn't had that job. So we learn as we go. <laughs> we really do. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And you've led me very nicely to the next question there about some of the things that you've learned and picked up from your working career. So are you happy to share a few more nuggets of wisdom with the listeners? <laughs> sure. Because when you're old like me, when you've been doing something this long, <laughs> like I have, you learn a shit ton over the years. But I'll say this, so don't let yourself settle or get stale. It's, it's totally okay to move on from your current career, but doors and opportunities will not 
just be handed to you. If you want to change, if you need a change, you're going to have to be proactive to get that like out there in the universe. You know, you are in charge of pushing the wheel and starting that moment momentum and all the things like, you know, updating your resume and interviewing all feel super daunting, but do it. Put your big girl pants on and do it. You'll learn so much even in that process and you come out better for it. Love that. I'm going to absolutely steal the same, put your big girl pants on. <laughs> How I got my job at the boutique agency was, was I followed some great advice. The agency wasn't hiring at the time, but one of my mentors, Julie Duros, she said, send in your resume anyway. And I did. And they loved me. And I was hired after two interviews at that agency. So, <laughs> you know, just do it. Like make the doors, make your own doors. Just do it. <laughs> Yes, love that advice. That's brilliant. Definitely will resonate with the listeners. You mentioned there about uh, a mentor who I imagined would be an inspiration for you. Yeah. Can you share a little bit more? Who has been a big inspiration for you in the industry? Who do you want to sort of take a moment to, to big up and shout out now? One of the beautiful things about the digital marketing world is there are plenty of people to be inspired from. And um, so I have a very extensive <laughs> list. So from an SEO perspective, it, I'm just so truly inspired by Arish Abuali, the founder of Women in Tech SEO. Um, I have heard her mentioned in a couple of her podcasts, and I heard you mention that you know her. She's incredible. Um, she has done such amazing things with the Women in Tech SEO community, which I am a part of, and I'm so humbly flabbergasted, honored to be a part of that. Um, and I was actually just chatting with one of your previous guests, Rebecca Dunn, about her as well. And because we're both a part of that women in tech SEO community and just how awesome Arij really is. And she creates such an awesome space. And sorry, I can hear my trash trucks driving by. So <laughs> if you guys can hear that in the background, that's what that sound is. <laughs> I have waited 10 more minutes. Um, but the... It's just, it's a wonderfully warm place to be and ideas are always there and the support is always there. So it's it's really cool. Um, I also really love Susan Winograd, Lily Ray and Ginny Marvin's commentary, not only on SEO, but digital marketing as a whole. There's also some great guys out there, Rick Rodriguez, Jason Bernard, Craig Campbell, Glenn Gabe, Tristan Jarman. They're all just amazing voices in this industry. But on the social media world, because I have like two lives, <laughs> There are also <laughs> incredible people. <laughs> so Janet, and I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher Janet's last name, Machkua. She's really great on Twitter. Brianne Fleming, Kristen, um, God, I'm so bad with last names. Gritman, Julie <laughs> McCoy, and the entire Express Marketing team. Such great social media presence and voices um, about social marketing and content marketing. Uh, that I love them. I have alerts set on Twitter for them specifically. <laughs> Awesome. That's when you know you've made it if you've got alerts and notifications set up. Yeah, Yeah, I want to know what they say. Right when they say it, I have to know. Love that. That's a, that's a good bit of advice, actually. I think I should follow that. I was getting more into down the lists sort of route, but then it's on you really, isn't it, to check it rather than... Exactly. And that's why I love alerts. <laughs> Just pop it out right in my face, like right when it happens. <laughs> Awesome. Right. An extensive list of people. So when this goes out, you're going to have to tag everybody and say, listen to this. I've given you a massive shout out. Yeah. And then deeply apologize for butchering. Them. <laughs> awesome. So look, um, we've learned a lot about you, how you got to where you are now. And you're with SEMrush or SEMrush, however you want to pronounce it. Let's talk a little bit about your current job role now. What's the mm -hmm. biggest challenge you've got right now and how are you overcoming that? So my job is super cool. So part of my job is to educate. So getting opportunities like being here with you are such a wonderful win for my role. I get to talk to people about digital marketing and that's my job. Like how lucky did I get? <laughs> so, but coming into these opportunities for podcasts and virtual conferences is an ongoing challenge and task, but it's such a great win when it happens. Again, the other part of my job too, as a social media and community manager, that just keeps me on my toes because social media is constantly in flux. Our audience interests are constantly in flux. So that continued process of testing and being creative is absolutely necessary. We want to keep you, our audience and our community entertained. 
and we want you to find our information helpful. So we're always looking for new and creative and fun ways to do that. So the challenge is tapping into your brain and coming up with the new creative and fun ways to do that over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> your brain gets a little tired after a while. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, this is the part where I hate segue and give it to you, but look, it is what it is. It is a lockdown podcast. And, uh, yep. as we speak, I think we mentioned before the recording that the UK, um, is about to head into another lockdown. Uh, mm -hmm. by the time this goes out, hopefully we'll be near the end of it. Please God. Uh, <laughs> yes, well, I'm we will sending be. lots of wine thoughts your way. I hope you stacked up. So, <laughs> Uh, ironically, the supermarket is here, like running out of all the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how the UK deals with lockdown. Anyway, we digress. Let's talk very briefly about COVID. How has it affected you professionally um, and how have you responded to that? Yeah, so professionally, uh, it's it hasn't been too dramatically of, of an impact. SEM Rush already has a very large remote work environment, so that transition didn't hinder progress. But on the social side of things, honestly, it helps strengthen our digital community. We have this tremendously vocal and tight-knit community, but COVID has had, I think, this underlying strength to it because we've come together even more. We all kind of have this heart that we're in it together and we have been deep diving into social media as a way to connect more and be present more. And we have definitely felt that here at SEM Rush uh, on the community side of things. So I think it strengthened us. Yeah, definitely. When I can, I always try and join a SEM Rush chat on Twitter. Um, and it just amazes me to see, because I, I set up the hashtag to follow so I don't miss anybody's replies, mm -hmm. um, because I might not be following everybody. And you just ask one question and just boom, a sea of replies. And I'm like, yeah. wow. It's one of the greatest things. Oh, sorry, would you say if you might cut you off? <laughs> No, no, I was just going to say, it's uh, the uh, the community that, that you've got is absolutely huge. And one of the good things about it is there's such a diverse range of opinions. You don't get 100 replies of exactly the same thing. They're likely going to be completely different things. It really makes you think differently about stuff. So I love that. It's a great point about the community that you've made. We there. do. And we take a great sense of pride and joy in our Twitter chat. And we're recording this on a Wednesday and our Twitter chat's going to start in 40 minutes. Um, and if you see someone ask you a question and it says SEM rush chat hyphen Diana. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Right. So look, we've talked a little bit about, you know, building the community, learning and developing, which leads me nicely to my next question about yourself and your own learning and development. How do you do that? How do you stay on top or how do you keep in line with everything that's going on in this ever changing industry? Twitter. <laughs> Twitter, <laughs> <darn> Twitter alerts. <laughs> they have become my best friend and a very strong asset in keeping up with the multi aspects of my job and my career in SEO and social media. So I'm on Twitter a lot, but I also have very specific newsletters and I heard them referenced in some of your other podcasts too. Aleda's pod, or not podcast, Aleda's newsletter is incredible. The ones that come out, you know, every morning, so I do research engine journal and a lot of the others that, you know, curate a content throughout our industry. And I spend a lot of my mornings reading. So yeah. I just, you know, I scan and read and I catch up on Twitter and these, and these newsletters. That's why I don't subscribe to every newsletter. Cause I, you know, I've got to get to work, but <laughs> that's what I do on most of my mornings. I also follow and pay attention to the big techs. So like Google and Microsoft. Twitter corporate, Facebook corporate, so I can stay on top of what they're talking about as well um, and make sure we're aware of any announcements and changes. So, yeah, <laughs> but it's great. <laughs> oh, and one other thing, I do have to plug our own blog, SEM Rush's blog, because we have this incredible team of researchers and content creators on that end that I will absolutely go to our own blog to stay updated. So it's great because I get, I'm like one of the first people to know when we've got a new piece or a new research study coming out. So I'm always in the know when the information is available. So our blog's really cool too. Awesome. Yes, I am a reader of that. And I completely agree with what you said there. Don't subscribe to every newsletter. That's a big uh, mistake that I made when I started in the industry. I was like, oh, you've got a newsletter? Boom, 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 sign up. And then I went into that 
sinkhole, wormhole, whatever you want to call it. Rabbit hole is the phrase I'm looking for. <laughs> I'm just creating rules. So if a newsletter came in, I would just create a rule and put it into a newsletter folder. And then it just gets to like 1,600 unread. And I've never read any of them. <laughs> because I know if I subscribe, people will be like, oh, yeah. So we saw that. <laughs> <laughs> rookie mistake <laughs> well, exactly which is a, a lovely segue you do great at segueing into these questions about <laughs> mistakes and failures so Diana the last 12 months what would you say has been the biggest failure for you yeah so out of all of the questions for today this one was the hardest to think of an answer for <laughs> <laughs> because there there have been so many instances of things, you know, not working the way I wanted them to, initiatives that I worked really hard on putting together that didn't get pushed through, a genius creative idea that nobody else liked, but none of those are failures. Those are, they just are what they are. You know, things just didn't work out for whatever reason, and they kind of stay in my mental toolbox for when it is the right time. And so I don't, I don't really think of anything as a big as a failure, not even a big or a small failure. There just wasn't the right time, wasn't the right idea at the time, wasn't, you know, didn't suit the mood, didn't suit our tone. Next time. I like that. That's definitely a different way to think about it. Um, for <laughs> me, it's probably because I'm a Pisces and I'll get overly emotional about things. But if I suggested like a creative that it didn't work, I'd be like, oh, go, where did it go wrong? What was wrong with it? And oh yeah, I take it all personally, down. but I just know from a work perspective, it's not a failure. <laughs> Awesome. Right. So this is the part of the podcast where I'm hoping that you're going to give me like some super mega huge exclusive where I ask you, what are you working on right now? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we've got some great research coming out in November. I won't reveal too much because it is confidential, but stay tuned. Ah. <laughs> we are working on, well, we personally, I'm working on ways to boost our re our webinar registrations through social media. So I'm doing a lot of testing there. My team and I were working on optimizing our own customer journey. So that's been a really fun um, process and experiment. And then I am going to start working on my LinkedIn growth. And in fact, I just reached out to one of your other podcast uh, guests to get a little help on that. And I'm also working on a presentation for the Digital Summit at Home, which is later this month and then again in December. So I will be speaking at those events. Awesome. Once this is done, definitely share some links with me and I'll uh, make sure to put them in the show notes. Okay. Great. Right. This is the part of the podcast where you get to be the interviewer and effectively interview yourself. So You've got the chance now to open season. You can ask yourself a question that I haven't asked you. What would that be? Well, I would much rather interview you. That would be my <laughs> fun. Because I already know all the answers to my interview questions. <laughs> but I would ask a couple, of course. Diana, what area of digital marketing would you want to learn more about? Python. Diana, who in the digital marketing industry would you like to meet? Alayda. Diana, who would you in a movie about your life? Well, that's tough because I would love either Jennifer Lawrence or Brie Larson. Diana, where is your happy place? On a vineyard on a sunny day, not too hot, with plenty of hilltop views. That's what I would ask. <laughs> love that. Love that. I think that's probably the best segment that I've done. <laughs> Just my double personality kind of and that's just me running through questions in my head <laughs> or that's more like a what how do you interview yourself like while you're in the shower or like in the car like <laughs> brilliant listen uh look this has been brilliant we could just carry on talking forever i do always like to sort of wind down the interviews by asking you if you do listen to music of course mm -hmm. uh when you need to get deep into that zone what is your go-to song artist playlist what helps you get into that zone so right now, I'm obsessed with the Hamilton soundtrack. Um, I play it while I'm working, when I'm working out, I'm obsessed. And I don't have Disney Plus right now, so I can't watch it. But I've seen it live. It was great. But I'm obsessed with that. Or I like to play a movie in the background, like one that I've seen a million times, like Harry Potter or something, because it's just kind of a, it's almost like a fun side distraction, but my brain works well when I'm multitasking. So I 
can get deep dive and creative yeah. if I'm just listening to something I've heard a million times, but I also really enjoy. Love that. Right, I'm going to sidestep for a minute because I have recently watched Hamilton. Not live, so I'm incredibly jealous. <laughs> What's your favourite song on the soundtrack? Um, there are two. I, of course, everyone loves the, the King's songs, but I also really love the song Yorktown. Um, I'm from Virginia, so a lot of like the geographical references resonate very strongly with me. Yorktown is one of them, but I love the song. I love, I love the beat. I love the violin in that song. I love when they're like recapping what everyone's been doing and they're gearing up for this battle. I, if there was a song to play when I walked into the room, it would be that. <laughs> <laughs> love that. For me, I cannot stop playing You'll Be Back, obviously. Love that. <laughs> yes. uh, and the room where it happens, oh my God. When I first yes. walked in, I was just walking around every part of the house just singing that over and over again. <laughs> With like the shoulder bop kind of going in the room where it happens. Like I immediately just want to like, you know, dance along. Well, so when I go on my walks, I, I've been walking a lot um, and listening to the soundtrack. I sing while I'm walking, while I, you know, <laughs> I'm like dancing, like, you know, this, and then I'll point to my ear. I'm like, Hamilton, I'm listening to Hamilton, guys. It's okay. <laughs> I'm not just making this up in my head. <laughs> yeah, I'm not ashamed to admit that both of those songs are on my gym playlist, which is ultra weird when it just on shuffle because it will be all sorts of genres and then just a bit of musical. Yeah, I can't do it on shuffle. I have to listen to it in order. But now I have the most important question for you, though. Go Who on. would you play in Hamilton? I would quite like to play Burr, I think. Really? You want to play the bad guy? Yeah, yeah. I would like to give it, like, a different spin. Because mm -hmm. he was quite... I'm, I'm speaking about, obviously, having watched it on TV and I imagine in person, <clears throat> excuse me, it would be so much more better, but... He was very much like, I don't know, I can't really find the right word. He was an interesting bad guy, but I think I'd probably just be more, like more evil and get that evilness across. Um, just be like, oh, fuck you, Hamilton. Mm. <laughs> I view him more as an opportunist. Yeah. And I think, you know, obviously years of having this, what is it, conflict with Alexander Hamilton leading up to the duel, Spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't done <laughs> American history, but <laughs> um, you know, I and I, but I, I can respect some of the things, some of the choices that he really makes in life. And one of the moments I find most interesting in Hamilton is when Burr is approaching George Washington and trying, basically trying to, what I was just saying, like open your own doors, like make your own opportunities, and sometimes it doesn't work. Like poor Aaron Burr gets the door shut behind him, but yeah. he, I really respect him for going to Washington and saying, Hey, I've got some ideas. I love what you're doing. I think I can help. And, you know, Ale Alexander Hamilton kind of overshined him a little bit there, but that's one of my favorite Burr moments. Awesome. I'm just in my head. I'm thinking, right, let's just start a Hamilton podcast and just. <laughs> talk about Hamilton. <laughs> I know all sorts of people who can chime in. We got plenty of guests. <laughs> Listen, thank you very much for being such a brilliant guest. Where can people find out more about you? How can they get in touch? Yeah, I am on Twitter a lot. My handle is at Diana Rich 13 because 13 is my lucky number. And I'm on LinkedIn, my, my full name. So that's spelled, that'll be spelled out here in the podcast, but that's Diana Richardson. And that's where I spend a lot of my time. Awesome. Thank you very much for being a super fantastic guest and <laughs> thank you for being a super fantastic host <laughs> i've definitely learned a lot from you i'm sure the listeners will too i will now do what i usually do shut up and let you have the last word on the show have a beautiful day everyone So that was another great episode in the bag. I'm really enjoying hearing from some brilliant people in this industry. If you enjoyed this podcast, please follow me on Spotify. Please leave a rating on Apple Podcasts or whichever platform you are using. Tell a friend to tell a friend and hopefully see you for the next episode.